Okay, welcome to mini lecture seven for module three. This will be the last of the mini lectures in module three. And again, as we move through the different regions, uh, please note that we're not going to be covering all of the material that is in the textbook. I'm going to be picking out selected topics and asking you then to kind of critically evaluate them on top of the, the basic text reading. So in this case, for the Americas, what I want to talk about is the issue of migration and both the documented and undocumented migrants and then the question of refugees. And so let's take a look at this. Now, first of all, when we talk about human movement, we need to be, be understand that people move or migrate for different reasons. And oftentimes, and again, for the quiz, make sure you understand these, there are what we call push and pull factors. So push factors are those things that drive someone out of their uh, land of residence. Pull factors are things that draw people towards a new home. So not surprisingly, push factors, for example, are things like persecution for various reasons, violence in the home country or home region, war. Push factors can also be poor wages or no jobs. Poor wages can also, we'll see, get associated with inflation. They might be natural disasters, things like drought, famine, pollution, natural disasters. Then finally, it may be that the country itself is falling apart. Uh, lack of services, limited opportunities in a broad sense. Now flip all those around and you'll see that, that they become pull factors. Areas that are deemed as safe and stable, places of political freedom, locations that have high wages and, high, and favorable job prospects, security, food security, better environment. If you have a part of your family in another country, that will pull you towards it. Better quality of life and services, security in those ways as well. So all those things are the dynamic of push and pull that exists today. Now, we're going to introduce two concepts here, and I want you to look at the idea of undocumented migrants into the United States, and then the crisis in Venezuela. So these are two, two areas of the Americas, the United States and many of the Central American states, and then Venezuela and its surrounding states. So let's take a look at what's going on there. First of all, we need to begin with Venezuela. And I'm Venezuela has gone through a series of socialist reforms over the last two decades um, with the advent of Hugo Chavez's presidency and then his successor, Nicolas Maduro, and the question of Maduro's most recent election um, being challenged um, by Juan Guaido. Over all of those times, the other thing that has been happening, though, is that the economy has collapsed. And it's important to understand this idea of inflation. If we think about it in the United States, we might be running 1% to 2% inflation. What inflation simply means is that what you can buy with your currency shrinks. So if you think about it, today the cost of hamburger is a dollar. Inflation would mean that next year the cost of that hamburger, in order to buy the same hamburger, you're going to have to spend a dollar and a nickel. Okay? That's inflation, and it's a normal process. If we look at what is happening in Venezuela, it's what's called hyperinflation. And if we look at the rate of inflation between July 2017 and June or May of last year, the rate of inflation was 27,000%. That means that essentially the currency that you had a year ago, or a year and a half ago, is worthless. In this case, $27,000 is worth a dollar. Okay, we've, we've lost all of that value. When that happens, countries simply cannot function economically, and that's where we have collapse. And in the case of Venezuela, what has happened in many South American countries is that Venezuelans are fleeing the country in order to take any jobs anywhere else where their currency is stable. So that there's a push factor out of Venezuela and then pull factors into the surrounding countries. When we look at Venezuela, what we can see is that their rates of migration have, tra have changed dramatically. In 2005, near the beginning of the Hugo Chavez uh, period, outward migration was relatively low, still fairly high, but, but moderate. 
Today, by 2019, three and a half million people, or almost three and a half million people, have left the country in a single year. That type of outward migration is not sustainable, neither internally or externally. The surrounding countries, Ecuador and Peru, which I visited last year, were beginning to feel the same pressures and concerns about the Venezuelan migrants that we hear in the United States about Central American migrants, that the population simply is not sustainable, that the infrastructure can't support them. Now, contrast that with what is happening in terms of the U.S. border and undocumented migrants. In our country, President Trump and, and his administration has advocated for much tighter border controls because of this very, very high influx of undocumented migrants. And it is absolutely true that the number of migrants has increased dramatically. One of the push factors that is being recognized is that from many of the Central American countries, violence in country is forcing or encouraging people to leave. So that is a push factor towards a much, much secure, financially viable location in the United States. If you look at this, this is the, the, the most uh, violent cities in the world. And what you'll notice is that the cities that we conceive of as the migrant sources in the last, since 2016, are all in Central America. These are the most violent countries in the world, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, and El Salvador. And this is where the majority of our migrants are coming from. So there's a very real push factor. And in fact, many of these migrants that are claiming asylum may have a legitimate claim to it because of the violence in their home country. So when we think about the pressures and the questions of migration, we have refugees, undocumented migrants, and legal migrants. All of these produce challenges around the world in terms of the question of is open migration? Is there closed migration? Do we prevent people from entering the country? These are not easy things to answer, but they are things that we have to answer. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm giving you a reading on a single community in Honduras and the challenges facing the youth in that city. I'd like you to read the article and then I'm going to ask you some questions in the quick write assignment. That will be the majority of your grade for module three. Make sure that you've carefully read that article. If you have questions, please send them to me. I'm not asking you to think one way or the other, but I would like you to critically evaluate some of the questions that are raised by that type of situation in a home country. Okay, that's it for module three. Make sure again, you've read the textbook completely before you take the quiz. You complete the quick write assignment. And then I have a little bit of a uh, kind of a light discussion board post that I'd like you to evaluate uh, a new tool called Dollar Street. That's it again for Module 3.